love it, I love it, I love it. That is actually my claim to fame, you know? I, I, I'm like, I, I'm Kendrick Lamar instead of Kendrick Venar. I said, I had the name first, you know? And uh, anyway, that's awesome. So, hey, so great to be here. Uh, I, I was just sitting here worshiping, thinking about the fact that it was 18 years ago uh, with Jimmy and Ramona and, and, and Jerry and Nan Daly that I came down here and to think of all that the Lord has done. At, at that time, Grace Life Church was just a vision. It was just an idea in, 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 in Jerry and Nan and, 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 and Ken Lane, your, your hearts. And to see all that the Lord has done uh, is absolutely incredible. And now, most importantly, y'all, y'all know who's in the house this morning? Your pastor. Come on, let's go. Let's give him a big hand. I, in case you're a guest, didn't know, Pastor Jimmy and Ramona have been on sabbatical uh, for 11 weeks, and uh, I feel, I'll be honest, I feel slightly self-conscious, uh, like everyone else is like, we want Jimmy, we want Jimmy, like who's this dude today, you know, but anyway, uh, Pastor Jimmy will be here speaking uh, next weekend, and I want to thank you for giving him and Ramona the gift of being able to take some time off to Sabbath, sabbatical, Sabbath, okay? It's a, it's a rest, it's a spiritual principle. And I tell you what, it's such a blessing because it has so much good when you rest. It, it's a proclamation that, see, this is really Jesus' church, right? We're, we're, we're not building the church on a personality or a person, but it's his church. And, and he can do something great. And, and, and when you unplug like this, the... The team gets better, the staff gets better, the elders get better, the pastors get better, and Jimmy gets time to hear from the Lord and dream a little bit. And that's what we're actually gonna talk about today, dreaming God's dream. And so also I just wanna mention, I wore these shoes just for Jimmy today. I know how much he loves Air Jordans and Michael Jordan, and particularly the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. <laughs> and so uh, last time I was here, I was like, oh yeah, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, that's, that's the school Jimmy loves. And I'm like, yeah. It's totally not true, he loves Duke, that other school. But uh, anyway, I didn't even correct the person. It was awesome. So anyway, I'm like, yeah, go tell Jimmy that. So anyway, um, so great to be here. Hey, I wanna uh, just, if, if you don't know me, introduce my family. Got a little family photo here. Our family's been growing. I've got five kids, two boys and three girls, and uh, both our boys are now married. My second son got married this spring. Kind of exciting and a little growing family. We've got three girls. Uh, anyone got a, a young man, uh, 24, 22, let me know. We're taking applications, but uh, praying in three more girls. But anyway, blessed uh, with our family. And this month in July, my wife and I celebrated 30 years together. So yeah, such a blessing. Such a blessing. And uh, my wife looks exactly the same. I'm just kidding. We both like, who are those old people up there? But uh, Anyway, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I kind of want to draft off of that because this summer when we had some time to unplug, had our anniversary, you know, you kind of get a little reflective. You know, it's like we, we've been together 30 years and you kind of look out into the next decade and we had time to sit and reminisce. And you know, we, we'd done different things for you know, the vacations or whatever. And I don't know, this year we kind of thought, what should we do? And we looked at different ideas. And, and uh, we've got four kids now that are, you know, growing and out of the house adulting, you know, off the payroll, praise God, thank you, Lord. You know. And uh, our, our youngest is a rising junior and she was off to camp for two weeks. And so we had the house to ourselves. Come on, baby, like, I don't know. But I know some people go through a transition, you know, like, uh, you know, empty nesting, but I'm like, I got a vision, you know, this is awesome. And so we did a staycation. My wife and I, like Sheridan Evernote, collected ideas for two months and, and said, hey, why don't we just take, you know, what we would have done, our, our, our little vacation budget. And, and, and we just had an uh, amazing time, the two of us. And it really gave us time to think and pray a little bit. Think back about the last 30 years and reminisce and tell stories, but also look forward. And what happened was this, at our 10-year anniversary, uh, which I guess would have been 20 years ago, uh, I surprised her, took her out for an overnight. And as we were on our overnight, our oldest at the time was eight years old. And it, John, I, I was just thinking, okay, what will it be like in 10 years? You know, you don't think in 10-year blocks too often. I said, what will it be like in 10 years? And it dawned on me that our oldest would be 18 and he'd be going off to college that, like within a couple months 
10 years and a couple months. And I was like, oh, you know? And I don't know, it just kind of surprised me because I realized, you know, of course we're a family, we'll keep doing stuff, but it all starts changing, right? And so I realized, my goodness, we got 10 summer vacations, we've got 10 Christmases, 10 spring break, like, it's such a finite number. Such a finite number. Psalm 90, uh, Moses wrote Psalm 90. He didn't write very many psalms, but it's kind of cool that Moses wrote a psalm. And he says, teach us to number our days that we might have a heart of wisdom. And we kind of like numbered our days. We're like 10. And it's gonna start changing a little bit. So we made a list of like things we wanted to do as a family, experiences, uh, vacations we wanted to go on, things like that, and, and things we wanted our kids. We also talked through like spiritual uh, experiences we wanted uh, our kids to have, um, you know, go on a missions trip with dad. My, my wife actually had a list of life skills she wanted them to learn. And, you know, we, 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 we sat and really thought through what do we want to do. And, and it's kind of interesting, our, our life in, in church ministry, as I look over it, we first got married, we were growing and God was preparing us. We moved, we ended up leading Grace Church in Chapel Hill and we got healthy and started to grow 10 years and another 10 year block, we were kind of building and expanding the base. And now we're kind of transitioning into a new decade of, uh, by God's grace, I believe, uh, multiplication. And over the summer, uh, we've been dreaming. We've been closing our eyes going, Lord, what do you wanna do in our lives over the next 10 years? What do you wanna do in Grace Church? And what happens when you get a dream from God is it brings purpose, it brings passion, it brings joy, it gives you clarity on what to say yes to and what to say no to. And what I wanna talk about today for a little bit is how to dream God's dream. How to dream God's dream for, for your life how do we know God's will and his plan? And Because I'm telling you, God has a dream and a vision and a plan for your life. And Proverbs says that where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there's no clarity of vision, like the word actually in Hebrew is like a prophetic vision. It's like it's a specific plan, something that God has just for you without that Another version says we're unrestrained. We kind of wander and drift and kind of, you know, you can just sort of let life happen or you can dream God's dreams in your life. And as a follower of Jesus, when you say yes to following Jesus, I know this is very simple. You say yes to following Jesus. What does that mean? He leads, we follow. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. I mean, I don't know, it's so simple but stunning. Like, there is a plan, a destiny, a purpose for your life. When you say yes to Jesus, you're saying no to me and my plan and, and, and what, God, what I might wanna do. I'm saying yes to Jesus. And where you go, you don't know. Where it leads, we'll find out, you know? And, and, and we fulfill the plan of God, the purpose of God. And when you say yes to following Jesus, Sometimes you end up in places you didn't expect. Like, have you ever had something in your life turn out not as you expected? You know, sometimes it's for the good. Sometimes it's not so great. Some of you uh, may know my story, but uh, it was four and a half years ago, and uh, I had problems with my feet. I still do, and, and, and I went to see the doctor, and I'd been gone to a podiatrist, and you know, whatever, trying to all this physical therapy and, and, and ended up seeing a neurologist and had a 15 minute interview uh, a, a meet, uh, appointment, I was gonna get in, get out and ask my questions. And I was just about to walk out the door and she said, well, I need to share something with you. And long story short, she said, you've got cancer. Like there's a pretty significant tumor about the third of the size of my neck growing in my neck. And that's why everything was melting down. And I was like, didn't see that one coming. The plan took a little turn. Did radiation treatment that was supposed to work in 90 some percent of the time, didn't. Now what? You know, go to Mayo Clinic uh, and, and, and uh, went through chemotherapy. Not recommended. If you have to do it, do it, but not a whole lot of fun, you know. 
uh, I was like, I got chemo for the first time. It's kind of funny, I just started hurling, you know? And the nurse came by and she goes, are you all right? I said, yeah. I said, but this is all my wife's fault. And she's like, oh. <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, like, she only feeds me health foods. Like, I can't even eat, like, McDonald's without feeling sick. And now you put this, you know, stuff in my body. I'm like, <laughs> Anyway, I was just joking. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out as we expected. And it's difficult, right? Now, when you say yes to Jesus, there's nothing more exciting, there's nothing more fulfilling, there's nothing more significant, satisfying than following his path and knowing you're on it through the twists and the turns and the ups and the downs, okay? And, and, and it's an unending process. You, you know, you're following the Lord. Listen, I'm not talking to some of us because if you're here today, let me just say this, God has more for you. And you don't know what's right around the turn. Right, you can take that next step, go around the turn, go ah, and it can be different for you, and it can open up a new opportunity, and God has new things for you. But 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 here's the challenge. Here's the tough reality for all of us. God's got a dream. God's got a vision. God's got a purpose. But y'all know this to be true too. Life will beat the dream out of you. It gets tough. It's not easy. I don't know what it is for your journey. You know, I mean, that same season, my wife got kicked by a horse. It was a miracle. She lived, shattered all the bones in her, like, face and and through here. Like, there were so many pieces that they couldn't do surgery. Uh, They said they're, like, they couldn't put in a plate. And and she, you know, I mean, looks great. (laughs) Uh, It was a miracle. Um, It gets tough. You end up at the end of your rope. You get beat up maybe emotionally, spiritually. Maybe you fail, mess up. You take a wrong turn and go down a wrong path, and you go, that wasn't so good, that wasn't so smart, that ended up kind of painful. Maybe someone turns on you. Now, let me say this. There is not one person in the Bible that's got this happy, happy, happy story that's just up and to the right. I mean, think about it. Try to think of one Bible story where there's like an awesome man or woman of God that just fulfilled the purpose of God and was just up and to the right, happy, happy, happy. It doesn't work like that, does it? I mean, think about Joseph. I mean, Joseph is one of the most up and to the right, godly, made so many few mistakes. He had a dream and a vision from God that he, he literally had a dream to be a leader and influencer and his brothers were gonna bow down to him and you know, and he was gonna be the leader and life got tough. His brothers were jealous, betrayed him. I mean, you kind of put this in your head, sold him into slavery got falsely accused of rape and thrown in prison for it. I try to go there emotionally and I go, are you kidding me? He got tough. He got forgotten there for years. Moses had a calling to be a deliverer and and he rose up in his own strength and committed murder, ran for his life and spent the next 40 years hiding out in the desert tending sheep. He's like, I'm done, I'm out, it's over. Esther became a queen. It's a fairy fairy tale story of just up and to the right until her people, the Jews, got targeted for genocide and she had to risk her life to save her people. There is no story that's just happy, happy, up and to the right, smooth sailing. And I don't know what it is for you, but I do know this, life isn't easy. Relationships are hard. Maybe your marriage melted down at one point. Maybe it survived, maybe it didn't. Maybe your kids really went through a tough season and maybe even with your adult children right now, there might be some distance and difficulty and challenges. Maybe your career didn't work out as you had hoped for and planned on, and your finances might be in a tough place. I don't know. Maybe you're just feeling a little lonely and isolated, and it kind of got tough, and there you are. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's been your physical health has been a huge battle, and you haven't been able to kind of do the things that you would like to do. Maybe it's your mental health has been a battle. You've struggled internally. You know you're not really doing that great. And it's challenging. Maybe you feel like a failure, hiding sort of an internal sense of not measuring up. 
Or maybe you were let down by family, your job, church, leaders, I don't know. Let me tell you what. There's almost always a death of a dream before a fulfillment of a dream. There's almost always. This is a principle. It's really good to know because I, I want to speak life and encouragement to you that your experience is not just you. There's almost always a death of a dream before a fulfillment of a dream. And we can see it as like, life beat the dream out of me. But let me just say this, God has a purpose in the death of a dream. God actually can use it and he'll bring you through that trial. That's why you look at these biblical characters, you realize God brought them through a tough season. God brought them through difficulty. Why does he do it? Because God prepares you in the death of a dream. He purifies you, he grows you, he changes you. Often when the dream starts off, it's like a dream and a vision and it's, maybe it's for the Lord, but it's a little bit about me. You know, like Joseph is like, hey, by the way, y'all, I am gonna be the man. And, it, and, and God will bring you through the death of a vision to prepare you, to purify you. And when the dream was fulfilled, let me tell you, in Joseph's life, number one, the purpose that God has for his life was way bigger than he ever imagined. Think about Joseph. He ended up being the second most powerful, influential man on planet Earth at the time, second only to Pharaoh in Egypt. He saved the world. I mean, like, it's like Marvel movie. He literally saved the world. Uh, in what he did, and he was prepared. He had humility and character and kindness, and he could look his brothers in the eye and have no revenge, no bitterness, and say, that which you meant for evil, God actually meant for good. Even though it was evil, it was wrong, it was unjust, God used it for good in my life. He prepared me for such a time as this. And in that preparation, we get real clear. God's go like this, I'm gonna get the credit in your life. I'm gonna get the credit. Part of why you go through that death of a vision is, is, is God, you get to the end and, and, and you don't go, <laughs> I am awesome. <laughs> you don't go like, you know, if you've ever tried parenting before. You don't, you know, you, you, you start off with these great plans and visions and, and then you kind of like go through life and you get done. And if your kids turn out well at all, you go, thank God. <laughs> I'm hanging on my thread. <laughs> and he gets the glory and he gets the credit because it's, it's about him. And I want you to know today, I feel empathy for you. I am with you. I want you to win. I want you to do well. And I know, as I speak to you today, there's a, a God vision. And maybe like Joseph, you've been through it. Maybe like Joseph, it, it's been painful, difficult, unjust, wrong. But I want to just say this. You have destiny and purpose in your life. There's a, a dream that God has for your life. It's not over. The story's not over. And I want to ask, are you dreaming God's dream for your life? In the middle, maybe, of the challenge, in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the difficulty, in the middle of what you've been going through. What I want to do is just talk through five different ways or places you may be at with dreaming God's dream. And as I do that, I want to encourage you to think about maybe different aspects of your life. You may be in, not in one of these spots, but in two or three of these spots in different aspects of your life, personally, in your spiritual life, in your family life, in your career, in your relation, in your health, and whatever. Like, there may be different aspects. So let me, let me talk through these five different places you may be at. Number one is this, maybe you have no dream. Maybe you have no dream. Like, you, you go, Pastor, you're right, my, my, my dream's died. It got beat out of me. It's... I, I'm not dreaming God's dream. I'm just living, getting by. It's good to acknowledge that. It's really good to acknowledge that. Maybe you've lost the joy, the passion a little bit. You've lost the dream a little bit. 
We're gonna talk here in a few minutes and talk about how to dream again and, and let God breathe on that. But, but, but I wanna say this, not having a dream is not a good option, okay? You cannot be a healthy person without a God dream, without a vision. Internally, like God designed you to have purpose and destiny that's beyond yourself, that's eternal, that's lasting. There are good works prepared before the foundation of the world just for you to walk in. They're significant, they're, they're real. And, and, and without vision, we perish, we wander, we, we're, we're unrestrained and we kind of whatever. And, and God has a dream for you. There is a dream that's specific. And do not minimize yourself. Do not minimize your situation. Do not minimize your life. Let me say this. Do not disqualify yourself. You are not disqualified. There is a dream. You go, Pastor, you don't know. I've messed up. Okay, let me just, I hate to pop your bubble and pop your pride, but your sin's not that great. It's not that unique. Welcome home to Grace Life Church. You're a sinner like the rest of us. That's all of us, okay? And, and, and God has a dream for you. Now, here's the second option, is maybe you have the wrong dream. Maybe you have the wrong dream. Sometimes you have a dream, but it's not God's dream. Let me just say this. You don't get to make up your dream. You don't get to determine your dream. I know there's kind of a message out there that says, dream your own dreams, you know? And, 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 I, and part of that's good. I, I think we should, we'll, we'll talk about this, you know, think and pray and open our minds and our hearts and stuff. But at the end of the day, this is very important. You don't get to determine your dream. You discover your dream. See, it's really not your dream. It's God's dream. You discover God's dream. So the journey isn't like, you know, if, if, if I was like this, I want to dream that I'm a worship leader. You'd all like go, oh my God, Kendrick. No, you have no gifting. You are terrible. Please do not sing on that microphone ever again, okay? <laughs> you discover God's dream. You don't make it up for yourself. D.L. Moody says this, our greatest fear should not be a failure, but of succeeding at something that doesn't really matter. It's not lasting, it's not eternal. Like, wouldn't it be a drag to get to the end of your life and realize you lit up the wrong scoreboard? I lit up the wrong scoreboard. I won, I succeeded, but it wasn't at what matters most. It wasn't what was most significant. Your dream might not be a bad dream, it might be a good dream, but it might not be God's dream. We wanna discover God's dream for our lives, and there's a constant pull. I'm just telling you, there's a constant pull for you to invest your time, your energy, your resources, your heart, your weekends on things that don't matter most. There's a lot of competition for, like, like you're significant, and, and there's a lot of things that will pull you to something that's less when God's got something more. God's not asking you to sacrifice, make your life miserable. He's got better, he's got more. He's got something eternal, something significant, something lasting. And one question you can ask yourself is this, if my dream is fulfilled, will it show up in heaven? If my dream's fulfilled, like the, what I'm pursuing, will it show up in heaven? Is it about me or is it about God and his kingdom? So I got a dream and a vision. I, I, I've always wanted to be a scratch golfer. I wanna get down to zero. And I'm getting kind of close. No one cares. You don't care. God doesn't really care. No one cares, Kendrick. But the relationships I built when I golf, the refreshing to my soul, you see, you can have the wrong dream and miss the eternal purpose for why you're golfing or why you're going to work. You go to work and you have a career a career gives you something to live on. A calling gives you something to live for. And when you get God's dream, when you discover God's dream, the very same thing that you're doing can have an eternal purpose, and actually what you're doing can show up in heaven and make a difference in people's lives. The stuff that shows up and lasts 
that's eternal. The stuff that when you're on your deathbed, it gets really clear, doesn't it? Actually, when I got sick, the most profound thing I got learned was something my wife said, like 10, 15 minutes after we got the not good news about, you know, like you realize, oh, this is not a good situation. She said this, she said, Kendrick, in one moment, everything in life that matters most becomes crystal clear. It gets crystal clear, like certain problems. I don't care about the HOA. <laughs> Y'all cut your grass, mailbox, whatever. <laughs> but certain things did get a lot bigger. Eternal things, relationships. Discovering God's calling, God's dream gives you something to live for. Here's the third thought is this. Maybe you have a dormant dream. You, you, you have a dream and your dream is from God and you, like you go, if, if, if you close your eyes and thought about it, you go, I think I know it, but it's gotten dormant. It's gotten put on the back shelf, back burner. It's gotten like stale. <laughs> and maybe today, maybe so bold to say, maybe God brought you here to breathe on your dream, to remind you of your dream, to put some fresh passion into your heart for that God thing that maybe has gotten a little dormant, that you've kind of forgotten about a little bit or just gotten busy with life. And, and sometimes it like you have to wait for the dream to really happen, but there's two ways of waiting. You can passively wait, like, okay, Lord, you gotta do this, you know, and, and sit around and wait. Or you can wait in an active way where you pray, where you dream, where you take a step, where you move in that direction. And, 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 and you're waiting on the Lord, but you know that God's good, you invest, you take a step. And maybe today you have a dormant dream. Number four, maybe you have a vague dream. Now the possibility is this, you got a dream, it's in your heart, but it's a little too vague. You go like, I want to start a business, I like to play in it, or whatever. And, and it's just kind of vague. I wanna encourage you this, get specific, write it down. Get real specific, like what is your God dream? There's something about writing it down, by the way, that's really powerful. I mean, I don't care if you write it in a piece of paper, in a journal, on your phone. You write it down, whatever. Write it down. When, when you see it written down, God told Habakkuk, write the vision down that you could run with it. You can't really run with a vision. He was talking about heralding it, but you can't really run with a vision that's not clear. And there's something about writing it down that's really powerful. It comes to life in a different way that gets clear in a different way. It gives accountability in a different way. And often you end up knowing the next step that you could take in that direction. You go, okay, that is it. It's a little vulnerable, isn't it? To go, no, 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 no. I'd really like to start that Bible study. I'd really like to join the worship team. I'd really like to start a business one day. I'd really like to have a place for my grandkids to come. I don't know, whatever it is. You write it down. You may have no dream, a wrong dream, a dormant dream, a vague dream, or lastly, here's the last one. You may have a clear, passionate, God-glorifying, eternity-impacting dream. Okay, it's kind of a mouthful. We could also call it a, a God dream, okay? <laughs> Maybe you have a God dream, that's a short version. But you see, it's clear. You go, I got it written down. It's passionate, it moves your heart. It's God glorifying, he's gonna get the credit. It's eternity impacting, it's gonna really show up in heaven. That is what a God dream is this. And usually, this is what it taps into, which is really kind of fun, is when you do it, when you step into it, it might be scary, it might be vulnerable, it might, uh, but you go, I was made for this. I was made for this. And let me just say this, it may be simple, might not show up in the news, might not impact thousands and thousands, it'd be that big of a deal, but it will show up in heaven and it will make a difference. And you can start by doing for one what you wish you could do for all. You go, I got a God dream. I wanna teach kids to read. Ooh, 
Y'all know that literacy is a like legit issue. There's no greater correlation. Like if you love kids, one of the things that you can do to disadvantage kids is is there's a, it helped them to read. There's a guy in our church who for, la, for the last 18 years, because of his experience, has spent his life volunteering and helping boys and girls make sure everyone knows how to read in an elementary school. Powerful. I don't know what it is for you. Do for one what you wish you could do for all. Now, how do you dream again? Let me just give you a few brief thoughts. How do you dream again? Pretty simple. But I hope it would be something practical that might help you. Here's my first thought is this. You need to lift up your eyes. How do you catch God's dream? You, you have to do this and look up to the Lord, not to your circumstances, not look behind you to your past, not look at all the other people and what they have to say and their idea. Don't look at all the reasons at why it won't work out and couldn't and can't afford it and shouldn't and, 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 and you're too old, you're too young, you're too whatever, whatever. Excuses are convincing lies that we tell ourselves in a very convincing way. And, and when you lift up your eyes and look to God, and, and he can begin to breathe on you and speak to you, you can start to see as he sees. And I wanna encourage and challenge you, here's just a thought. What if you spent one hour, it's a long time, this week with the Lord? God alone. If you're married, maybe you spend an hour alone and then you connect with your spouse and talk to them. And just started to think and pray and dream a little bit. Lift up your eyes. <clears throat> start writing some things down. Start thinking. God, who have you made me to be? Lord, I believe there's a, a God dream for my life. You've got good works prepared before the foundation of the world for me to walk in. What are those? I want to discover those. I want to lift up my eyes. Lord, you who began a good work in me will bring it to completion. It's never too late. You're not too old. You haven't messed up too much. And spend some time lifting up your eyes. Secondly, in that place, you may need to give God any pain, disappointment. Give God any pain or disappointment. Give it to God. Let him comfort. Maybe you've failed. Maybe you've messed up. Maybe you stepped out by faith and had your heart broken, and maybe you, you, you weren't treated well. Let the pain and the disappointment not be the final word. Let it be a stepping stone. Let it not be a lid. There's no lid with you and God. There's no lid with you and God. Like, believe, God, if you, if you are for me, who can stand against me? And give him the pain. Give him the disappointment. Don't fall into resignation. Don't say that it's too late. Don't say, cast all that aside. Give him your pain. Let him comfort you and strengthen you. And then ask this question, what is in my heart? It's a great question to ask. You start with, okay, what is in my heart? What would I love to do for God with my life, for my family, with my family, in my church? If, 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 what would I love to see God do? What's in my heart? And maybe it's a positive, visionary thing. And, 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 and another question is, what's in my heart? Is maybe it's negative. Like you go, okay, what's in my heart? Is like, I'm really frustrated and angry over this issue in our culture or in the world or in our community or in our family or whatever. And sometimes God will use what has been called divine discontentment. That, 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 that frustration, that anger, that disappointment, whatever, can actually be the very seed of what God's called you to do. We had a gal in our church years ago, and she was like, you know, why don't we do more for the poor and the needy? You know, and we were doing a lot. And I, I, and I could feel myself initially kind of getting defensive, you know. <laughs> I'm like, don't respond, Kendrick, you know. And I asked her, I said, well, tell me what's in your heart. She goes, well, I think, you know, these families are in need, and we could do more for them. 
And I said to her, I said, I love that. I would love to help you fulfill that God vision in your heart. She did a thing called Grace Mart, where everything is free. Actually came up on my Facebook memories recently. It was like, our church was like packed. People lined up out the door, literally waiting for hours, TV, whatever came out. And it was like, we gave away more stuff, served our community, built relationships that were all year round with the community. It, it was powerful. And it all came from her frustration, not from her happiness. And maybe that frustration inside of you, that's what's in my heart. And then you need to ask this, God, what's in your heart, God? What's in your heart, God? Like, you, you end up surrendering it because you go, what's in my heart? Okay, but Lord, ultimately, not my will, but your will be done. What's in your heart? What's your plan? What's your timing, Lord? What God could only you do? What's beyond me and my abilities? And that unless God shows up, it wouldn't ever happen. It won't come to pass. And then surrendering that, sort of giving it to the Lord. And then lastly, you can ask yourself this, what step could I take towards that God dream? Just one step. Like if, 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 if you spend an hour with the Lord, or maybe you already know, you go, Pastor, I got it. I'm good. I know what it is. And maybe there's different areas too. Wouldn't it be cool, just think of this, Every single person at Grace Life Church made a decision, Lord, I'm gonna take one step in the direction of that God dream. I'm gonna take one step. I'm gonna call somebody up and ask them out for lunch. I'm gonna write it down in my prayer and I'm gonna pray every day for, during our prayer time coming up here, I'm gonna really lean into the Lord and I'm gonna start praying for this God dream. I know it's a God dream. Maybe you sign up for an online class. Maybe you get a mentor. You have destiny and purpose. There's a God dream for you. And I wanna pray for you right now that God would open the eyes of your heart and you would discover God's dream for your life. It's there, it's real, it's significant, it's eternal. And if you're gonna do that, let me just speak to you. If you've never surrendered your life to Christ and aren't living for him, you'll never discover your God dream until you lay down your dream. Jesus said, follow me. And it's like, well, I got a family. Well, I got a business. Well, I got, he, goes, oh. he goes, hey, you're gonna, there's this faith thing where you gotta lay down your dream and follow him all in, and then he reveals his dream to you. Now, I wanna give you an invitation today that if you've not laid down your dream and you believe in God, but maybe you've never like surrendered at all, wouldn't it be cool if today was the day you said, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm going all in for your dream for my life. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this incredible church and all that you're doing in and through Grace Life. I just speak blessing over every heart, every person here, Lord. I pray that you would bless them, that you would speak to them, Lord, today, this week, that the, that the God dream inside of every person, maybe there would be fresh seeing, fresh experiencing, fresh hearing, from you. Lord, I pray for any person that's here today and, and they really say like, Lord, I need to say yes to your plan, to your purpose. I need to surrender my life. Just say, Lord, I surrender my life. I ask you to forgive me for going my own way. We all like sheep have gone our own way. We've each turned to our own way and the Lord has laid upon him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. The iniquity, the sin, is our going our own way because God's got a way. He's got a path. He's got a destiny. And today could be your day to say, Lord, I'm all in with you. Father, I just pray that there would be fresh breath upon Grace Life, even as Pastor Jimmy is coming back and he's had time to meet with you, to dream, 
I pray that you would blow upon Grace Life Church. I know that the best is yet to come. You are working, you are moving, and I speak blessing over this church and this spiritual family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.